welcome to this uh, edition of a uh, special edition of the Mad Tech webcast. Uh, today we've got Thomas Lu Litson from, uh, from Extra Bladder. Is that right? Is that, did I pronounce that right, Thomas? Uh, Extra Bladder? Is that Extra right? Extra Bladder. That's perfect. Yeah. Right. My, my Danish is getting better every day. Um, um, yes. So today we're talking about the sort of uh, the Mad Tech middleware, right? Uh, it's basically this webcast is uh, based on an article I wrote. Uh, some time ago about how uh, the sort of ad tech and martech space will evolve given everything that's happening right now and Thomas has kindly come on today to help us walk through those uh, those issues and where um, the sort of uh, mad tech middleware will evolve and this has a huge effect on both sides of the uh, ecosystem publishers marketers uh, and agencies will all be affected by this evolution but Thomas, uh, before we just jump into this, uh, you know, fairly in-depth discussion around the future of ad tech in many ways, what can you give me sort of an overview of what you do there at uh, Extra Planet and a bit about yourself as well, please? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, uh, Extra Planet, uh, just to give you um, a yeah, notion about uh, who we are, we are the, um, uh, the biggest uh, tabloid uh, media in, uh, in Denmark. So we obviously started publishing it printed newspaper like 100 years ago and uh, 25 years ago we moved into the digital era and now we are running well one of the biggest uh, digital news outlets in Denmark. Um, Denmark small country with about 6 million people and we are in contact with uh, 1 million uh, Danes uh, every day so uh, uh, we do make quite an impact. Uh, I head up our uh, joint ad sales and uh, tech department We've chosen to uh, to kind of merge uh, the entire process from doing the actual selling, uh, that's IOs, programmatic, agency contact, everything with uh, all service delivery, uh, reporting, uh, surveys, whatever we do. So that's a joint department uh, with about uh, 30 headcounts um, and um, yeah. That's that's well, what I do. Right, and and uh, for for pe for the viewers here, uh, Thomas is quite an outspoken uh, um, individual in terms of like where the industry is going. And he's uh, he's been fairly forthright about the future of the industry in the privacy uh, settings, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But you're uh, often described as a cookie fundamentalist by some of your peers, Thomas. Uh, I mean, is that is that a is that a tag tag of honor for you, or or do you sort of like? Are you sort of a practical man and getting ahead and trying to get ahead of what's going on in the minute? And we'll talk about this because this is a, has a huge effect on the rest of the industry. But that cook, that cookie fundamentalist uh, uh, tag, <laughs> do you wear it with pride or or is it? Just uh, yeah, I I think it would look uh, great on a medal somewhere uh, on my chest. Um, and yep, yeah, I. Well, obviously, I don't regard myself as a fundamentalist, but what I'm trying to do is to address some of the, um, the problems that we have in our ecosystem and trying to address them, not just from the point of view uh, um, as an app director, but uh, as, uh, as one that actually cares about the relationship with users that uh, uh, as one that does recognize uh, that we have lawmakers and regulators that uh, don't agree with what's happening in the uh, in the ad industry and, and trying to see it from a more yeah, kind of it sounds like a cliche but from a more uh, uh, yeah holistic point of view and uh, yeah it's it's right I've been advocating that the that addressability should end that there's no room for universal IDs uh, in our ecosystem because it uh, it doesn't comply with uh, uh, privacy uh, regulation and it uh, certainly doesn't comply with uh, what users expect from us. Okay, let's set the scene, shall we? Uh, for the last 15 years, we have sort of walked off the back of uh, cookies, basically JavaScript on websites that have enabled us to target and measure uh, display advertising predominantly. Uh, flip side, it's also happened in mobile where we can use mobile IDs to do the same thing. So we've kind of dined off the back of that. An independent ad tech layer has built off the back of that. But as you said, Thomas, things have changed, right? In the last two years, we had three years, so to say, we've had legislation from the European Union, 
pretty, pretty strong legislation about how data can be used, uh, PII data, which involved, which included cookie to the, uh, obviously the industry tried to kind of work with the EU, but eventually the EU came out strongly against the use of third party cookies. Um, and then we've had um, the platforms make decisions on our behalf, Apple being the most prominent, have decided that the device ID would no longer be used uh, for targeting or, or measurement for any third parties. This is kind of blowing a whole hole in the, in the whole ad tech ecosystem because the ad tech ecosystem sort of uh, worked off the back of that. And now we're in this situation where, a lot, as you say, Thomas, it's like you want to be the right side of the law and the right side of history, so to speak that you cannot beat uh, um, the legislation as as was hap- as can you see what happened to Amazon, who got a massive fine for 800 million. Google's been fined in France, and there's pending cases all over the place around privacy. Then there is the case of Apple, who are literally using privacy as a marketing tool to drive sales, which I have to say is very, very impressive. We do have to caveat that with, that, with the fact that Apple is building a massive ad business, which is uh, very duplicitous. So let's talk about where ad tech is right now, right? We seem to be in this mess, trying to kind of root around for the the panacea, that that global ID, hacking privacy, fingerprinting. Like we both believe, and and I want your opinion on this, it's just not gonna work long term. Um, You're absolutely right. It it, it won't, and uh, obviously the right answer would be that we as an industry uh, came together and started building uh, a new way uh, or uh, paving a new way forward, uh, trying to find out what is actually needed to get the ecosystem running. And yeah, it's it's completely right that uh, we we had this wonderful thing where we could uh, track everyone across uh, uh, um, yeah, all platforms everywhere, and we c- could get a lot of data. But that that is just the world of ye- of yesterday, um, and it won't be coming back. And uh, instead of investing all our resources in trying to pull back uh, w- what has been lost, then we should try to look at what what we can actually do in the future, working together, um, uh, publishers. Uh, tech vendors, agencies, and advertisers. And we don't kind of uh, pull in the same direction right now. Uh, You have advertisers on the one hand that has started uh, kind of uh, recognizing that they also uh, have uh, interesting data and trying to organize that. So they invest heavily in CDPs. Then you have agencies trying to uh, uh, build up a story that they will be the ones that can have actually leverage client first party data into the market. And then you have publishers building their own first party solutions, but there's no kind of uh, uh, line in that. And it's just, we, we are all doing uh, our own stuff and we aren't uh, making it click together. And I'm not talking about addressability, but I'm talking about finding out what KPIs uh, should we actually try to, to build this system um, uh, on in the future. So, 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 so basically you're thinking that the standards need to kind of change to fit the new world, right? I mean, it's never mind about tech. But yeah, we don't even have a contextual standard, uh, for, uh, just to, to, to take an example. We have the uh, IAB taxonomy, but it isn't widely implemented and it's, uh, from a publisher point of view, it doesn't really represent the content that we produce, but uh, it's the best thing we have right now. But um, yeah, uh, we need standards uh, and we need a kind of a common understanding of what can be achieved and what cannot be achieved in, in the new ecosystem without addressability. Do you think much of the current ad tech landscape is not fit for purpose now in the sense that if you take away the cookie, a lot of the sort of programmatic infrastructure doesn't seem to work properly. And that the solutions that we are looking at, and I'm not pointing the finger at the IV tech lab because they're doing the best job they can possibly do under the circumstances. But a lot of the stuff is about trying to keep the status quo rather than reimagining our space. Yeah, yeah. And I think uh, Unified ID 2.0 is a perfect example of that. Uh, just replacing the third-party cookie with uh, something uh, 
uh, something else, but uh, inherently it has all the problems uh, that uh, lawmakers and regulators wanted to address. Um, um, and imagine you as a publisher uh, prompting your user saying, hey, uh, we need your email address, by the way. Um, we're going to share it with hundreds, if not thousands of vendors with uh, whom we don't have a relationship and you certainly don't have uh, either. Um, and we need that in order to be able to do retargeting campaigns. That value proposition is bollocks. Uh, you, we would see our users, um, yeah, uh, running for the door very, very quickly. Yeah. Obviously, why would they ever do that? Um, yeah. Well, so so let's just let's just take a, a look at the current ecosystem, right? <laughs> As a publisher, what? Where do you see sort of your biggest pain point going forward? Like, so is it uh, measurement? Is it like? data management so like the, the hard thing right now is sort of clean rooms right uh info sums doing very well and there's a number of clean rooms popping up which basically is trying to sort of uh, make um the joining of data in a in a privacy first world which i think i think will work but is that the type of heck you're looking at or is it more the practical point of view is i've got contextual but i have no idea how to measure or or or, or you know or you know or execute it so so like from a practical point of view, what do you look at right now going, I need this tech, I need this to change. These are the, these are the things I need and want. Um, I think measurement is the key. Uh, it's the most important issue to be addressed because targeting, we can do that. Yeah, you'll have to get used to kind of old gardens. You'll have to uh, get used to uh, trading with uh, extra blood if you want to target your campaign to to, to certain audiences because we have the first party capabilities we have built our data platform and we are uh, leveraging that data in a privacy centric way so it can be uh, uh, added to campaigns from uh, different uh, buy side platforms but measurement no 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 one has kind of cracked that nut yet um, and uh, it's um, it's obviously what uh, if, if you were uh, and yeah, head of marketing at a, at a big brand, you get uh, your your yeah your bonus depends on uh, you being able to demonstrate value for your ad campaigns. Uh, to to put it uh, kind uh, kind of very basically, so we need to to be able to help advertisers and brands uh, get some kind of understanding of whether their marketing efforts. Uh, they, uh, they 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 bring along results um, and um, and I, I saw some interesting tendencies or uh, stuff in, in 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 what Google was trying to do with uh, flag and fledge uh, from a measurement point of view, but but obviously it it wouldn't stick because you're leaving all power in the hands of of, of Google and uh, you don't want them to decide whether a campaign uh, is successful successful or not uh, anyways not on behalf of, of a publisher do you think that we will end up moving more to sort of like uh panel based stuff and evolve panels and uh attention based because if you think about where you sit it's like it is like top of the funnel like you are a brand uh publisher or you're a brand publisher so so do you see that publishers will move more towards that uh, attention-based stuff and maybe evolve panel-based stuff that will allow um, the, that marketer to be bonused uh, every quarter and allow them to, you know, take that holiday of their dreams. Yeah, I think panels, uh, old-fashioned sales modeling uh, will will play a bigger role. Uh, we are investing right now uh, within the, the media group of which uh, Extra Blood is part of. Uh, we, we are investing in uh, uh, in our own panel uh, right now to be used for uh, uh, yeah advertising surveys um, um, because yeah we, we, we need that knowledge. Um, it can obviously also be used for a lot of other purposes, but um, uh, yeah, in a way, we are quite uh, inspired by what um, uh, Karen Eccles and her team has been doing at the uh, Telegraph in London. Uh, 
uh, this uh, metrics that matter concept and actually we've we've stolen the uh, the kind of the concept and use it borrowed, uh, borrowed, uh, thomas you haven't yeah, stolen that borrowed, borrowed. We, we've been um, uh, inspired and it's now the working title of what we are trying to achieve um, within the group, within Extra Blood. Uh, we are trying to engage advertisers and agencies and tech in Denmark in, in a discussion on future KPIs and future yeah. metrics. Uh, and they will, uh, from our point of view, need to be more attention-based uh, yeah. and also uh, yeah, as you say, uh, the, the upper funnel where uh, publishers uh, tend to to make a strong impression. So, so the, this like so the the old adage would be, or the old the, the comeback would be from the people who who are obviously still uh, trying to do the one to one marketing is that you just cede all the power to Google, Facebook, and Amazon. They get all the spend. Mm -hmm. um, do you net? Do you see that as a problem or? just to kind of like flip it if there is no cookie right long tail mid tail the long tail publishers really can't be aggregated as an audience buy right so that means that agencies have to spend money somewhere they're not all going to give it to facebook and google and amazon because they'll be fired by their marketer or partners that's just the way it is so do you yeah, think prices are rising in uh, facebook prices are rising yeah. right now so exactly. obviously if if you allow um, yeah uh, big tech or yeah whatever you call Google Facebook and Amazon Apple as well uh, to be in, in total control um, uh, on a market then you get a big tech monopoly and obviously prices will uh, will follow and uh, it will be uh, tough times for for marketers um, so we you you need uh, yeah the independent uh, range of publishers and and also part of the long term the long tail has lots of problems with quality and uh, obviously that's also something that should be addressed uh, being a publisher and, uh, and focusing on news journalism obviously i should say that we deliver uh, uh, quality in what we do but but it's also something we need to prove and we haven't been uh, uh, good enough to, uh, in, in doing so um, so it's it's also been about us publishers having leaned uh, way too uh, too much backwards and and not uh, really uh, trying to to influence the market and uh, and and pull it in the right direction and uh, we've not uh, yeah really argued our strength uh, to the market uh, as we should have done do you think that 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 this will that this publishers taking more control, which is interesting, right? That that will change the type of vendors you work with, the type of partners you work with, right? So instead of you leaning on an exchange or Google or whatever, you're going to say, look, we have the, the, the customer facing relationship, we have the first party data, we have the brand environment, right? So do you work more? more will we see a new wave of enabling tech? So when thinking about the likes of Cavi or Kevil or Dan ads are quite interesting because they kind of like help publishers and, and marketers build their own sort of solutions to, to execute into the market rather than sitting in between and taking a margin, a fat margin like Google, 30% buy site, sell site, which is outrageous. Um, Google stopped taking money from publishers. Um, that that will we, you'll become less dependent on the likes of Google and more moving towards this new wave of MarTech uh, tech enablers. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think we will ever get rid of um, the dependent or certain degree of dependency on uh, on Google. Uh, well, uh, if competition authorities, if the CMA in, in the UK, uh, they they do some, uh, some or make some radical moves, then then it may uh, may may happen. We've just seen that the Australian Competition Authority has. Uh, uh, put put forward. Um, well, it's kind of groundbreaking, but uh, yeah, declaring that that Google is bad for competition in Australia, and uh, uh, that should be addressed. Um, but but yeah, uh, we will start uh, relying on more uh, direct uh, relationship. You mentioned uh, Infosum, uh, obviously uh, doing uh, uh, matching or do or non matching uh, uh, in a um, uh, privacy centric way uh, with uh, with brands is, is a way forward of, 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 of 
making sure that they can actually uh, get hold of their audience, but you have the scalability problem. And I think that's that's the um, one of the biggest problems with uh, with this um, uh, middleware uh, is that you need some kind of scalability without reintroducing addressability and uh, yeah. it's a conundrum um, how, how, how do you how do you see that being fixed is it just a matter of like those companies building that scalability first or do you think it's, a, it's something they can't fix because it's such a huge problem mm, it, we should be able to fix it uh, working together. Uh, obviously, if you if you look at the Infosum case, it's a matter of us uh, building up um, a locked in uh, email base, so we'll be able to to do the um, the um, anonymous matching. But uh, but 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 other uh, you, you have kind of you have CDPs. Everyone is investing in CDP right now, and uh, they are uh, they're getting this single view of the customer on their side on the client side advertiser side but it's impossible to actually activate uh, that knowledge on the ad market because you don't have the identifier and that identifier won't be allowed uh, because apple don't want cross-site tracking the lawmakers uh, don't want it so so that is uh, perhaps something that is not unsolvable but it's it's a trick problem yeah yeah. In, in, in terms of how you think uh, the money will flow, I mean, like people are saying that, you know, impression level buying is going to be very difficult going forward and we'll move more to sort of programmatic or sort of programmatic guarantee. You've already seen that, like, so most of the campaigns are running, like post uh, cookie post ID. Are you seeing uh, that happening or are people still just over reliant on Google indexed sort of uh, uh, technology like uh, Chrome, etc.? Um, the open market plays a massive role on the Danish market. So uh, Google uh, still uh, still has a lot of market share on, on the open exchange. Uh, we are seeing a lot of uh, more deal based uh, transaction. Uh, but but obviously they are impression based. Um, what we have been doing is that we've uh, started uh, leveraging our own internal ID. We put an uh, anonymous ID on on all the uh, yeah, browsers, and we can make that ID available uh, if you buy, for instance, uh, through uh, through ad form. We don't share it with the market, but and, and as so such, your, your own wall garden effectively. Yeah, but it, it does make, um, for instance, frequency capping. It restores frequency capping in the Safari browser because it uses our ID. And that's okay. obviously a big USP for, uh, for a lot of buyers that has lost that capability uh, uh, within the Safari browser. And we attempt to do that uh, in a wider scale, but we don't want to share the ID with the market as such, because then you end up with matching tables and you get uh, uh, people using it uh, to uh, reintroduce addressability. And uh, it's it's never been a good place for publishers to be, because uh, in a world where you can where you just uh, uh, chase uh, cookies, then you don't care about context, you don't care about journalism. You, you don't care where your campaign ends up as long as the cookie has uh, the right values for your campaign. And um, that's not, not good for advertisers yeah. from a brand safety uh, perspective. And it certainly isn't good for yeah uh, uh, free journalism and publishers. But is that transition, Thomas, is it going to be difficult for a lot of publishers because they've grown to rely on, on that type of, in, uh, um, you know, uh revenue and the, what you're talking about is a kind of almost like a, a sea change like it's going back to basics in many ways like you you'll have a sales team possibly selling ios into the market right based on your on your um id which would be smart because you know agencies or, or marketers want that that level what well, that sort of addressability in your ecosystem so, but but do you think for many public because you're you you've been talking about this for at least two years since we we last mm. we last spoke to, you, you know you you you've been getting ahead of this. But do you think a lot of publishers are sort of sitting back waiting for stuff to happen, 
And how does that affect their sort of, uh, you know, their relationship with the tech the, in the ecosystem as well? Yeah, I think a lot of uh, publishers uh, and even the big ones, they, um, when Google announced that they were going to deprecate the third-party cookie uh, yeah kind of early next year they uh, leaned back and said okay um, things are going to change now but uh, obviously google will build something new for us uh, and we don't have to do anything um, a lot of them did that and now google kind of uh, uh, acknowledged their defeat saying hey well, we haven't built something. We can't build something that the market uh, will accept. And uh, uh, obviously, uh, Google uh, weren't going to uh, go forward with uh, uh, Flark and Fletch because it would also seriously damage their own business. So now they've kind of said, we, we need this break. And perhaps within, uh, 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 within two years, we'll have a new solution. But publishers need to involve and engage in this process uh, uh, to, to, a, to, to a way bigger extent than they are today because Google won't just fix problems. Apple won't just uh, oh. cancel the, uh, um, uh, their privacy approach. Um, uh, possibly they'll do it on their own platforms. Uh, I don't know if, if you've compared their own uh, tracking prompt when they prompt users in the um, in the app store. Then it's about personalization, and when they prompt everyone else in the apps via the ATT, it's tracking. Um, so even the the wording is 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 as you said, they are building a big yeah. uh, ad business on the side. They're 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 very much uh, uh, in in a sort of like a weird. They're using privacy as a means to sell more phones, but at the same time, they're also doing it to feather their own nest in terms of building out their own sort of ad business, which is going to be absolutely huge. But you're right about um, complacency. Like Google doesn't owe anybody a favor, and if anything, Google would probably better serve. I have a theory about Google actually. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm still a fan of Google, uh, despite what people think. Um, I think they may end up leaving ad tech. I've been sitting for two, three years. Like they're better off trying to sell us the cloud infrastructure they have because they'll make more margin off it. Like there's just not enough margin for uh, the size of that company in ad tech. So it'd be better if it's just like slung their hook and left. In that instance, then um, if that did happen, Thomas, well, how do you think the space would evolve? Because like the ad server has been kind of like the evo evolution of the ad server has been very much stunted because of Google's market share. They haven't really done an awful lot with it over 10 years or since they bought DoubleClick. Let's be honest, it's still, it's functional up to a point. Google make most of its money from the ad exchange because they're able to arbitrage that there, but they give it that tech away for free. Let's just say they le left the ecosystem. How would that affect a, a publisher like you? I mean, like you, you, must, you must see a lot of stuff that you'd like to implement in particularly in the ad server, given the fact how important it is. I want to talk about that particular piece of technology like, where do you see that evolving? I mean, do you think that the middleware, an existing middleware like the Google Ad Exchange could end up going away in many, in many cases? Because you're talking about uh, in terms of the campaigns as you run, a lot of that probably could be run from the ad server themselves, not necessarily need an ad exchange to make it work. Yeah, and uh, as you've seen, uh, Google and uh, yeah, and Sander as well, they've merged their app server and SSP. Um, I think um, I'll, well, it, it, I, I think from if you take it from the top, I think we'll see a movement from programmatic to automatic. Uh, and automatic is less uh, data reliant, it's more about the fundamentals. Uh, uh, you need to be able to buy a campaign automatically. You need to do some frequency capping and uh, do some kind of measurement. Um, and uh, well, couldn't that be handled in a framework like Prebit? If you extended Prebit, everyone has kind of a share in that and it's open source. And then um, uh, obviously, uh, uh, I think uh, I may uh, end up getting uh, threats from the entire ecosystem now, but wouldn't that do off with uh, with the SSPs uh, if you handled all that within Prebit and then had some 
uh, buying platforms connecting directly into that. Um, and then you could have an ad server on the side. It could be built by the publisher itself to address whatever the publisher uh, wanted to offer to the market. Uh, one of our uh, other uh, uh, news titles, they've uh, exited uh, programmatically in, uh, entirely. Uh, they are only running IOs with 100% uh, uh, viability guarantee. Uh, that's their way of doing stuff. Uh, wow. So they need they need a completely uh, different ad server in their way because that needs to look at attention metrics and obviously have the, uh, the, uh, the, the best uh, way of uh, measuring uh, viability and delivering on that. Uh, so those are capabilities that a third party, uh, some middleware could uh, that is open to to be modified could address. Um, so I think we, 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 we could end up with um, a way more simple uh, setup. And then obviously we need, if, if prebit pre were, were to play an, an even bigger role, we would need some a kind of governance mo model on that because uh, yeah, it's open source, but it's also dominated by the biggest players as well, so. Maybe the IAB Tech Lab could take control of pre maybe. Yeah, I think you need a new kind of structure because publishers uh, don't really play a big role within the uh, IAB tech lab. It is mostly dominant, dominated by the tech side. Um, and you need, perhaps you even need regulators to be part of this game as well so you can ensure privacy. So you get, uh, yeah, 360 uh, kind of involvement. Uh, we tend to see the ecosystem as just uh someone selling something someone buying something and then and then uh, the enabling vendors in the middle but you also have the users that are in the end exposed to an ad you have the lawmakers that uh, actually built the entire legal framework that we operate within uh, they are in no way represented in the way we uh, we handle our ecosystem today do you think in, in that scenario then that the take rate comes down? I mean, like for for someone who's at the end of the value chain, do you feel that there is a lot of money that's kind of like filtered out away from you because of the amount of technology that's plugged in in the middle? Because it feels like it's bloated, isn't it? You know, I, I think the value for, for ad tech or martech or mad tech in general going forward is the value they offer to marketers and agencies and publishers. So it's almost, they don't sit in the middle and execute and take, take margin. I think it's more about enabling um, the constituent players. Like you're after talking about the ad server. Could you plug in something to help your viewability score in terms of your one of your publishers? Likewise, if you were getting tons of programmatic guaranteed buys from a publisher, then is it like a yield optimization layer plugged into the ad server that's able to kind of like yield optimize based on price uh, rather than the cookie effectively? So like, do you think that that's going to happen, that 30, 40, 50% take rate in the middle is going to collapse and we're going to get more enabler tech coming into the ecosystem? Um, I would hope so, but um, the uh, resilience uh, of... <laughs> of uh, all these middlemen and their um, uh, their claim to to a fee is uh, is enormous uh, i think there will be a lot of pushback in these models but obviously i like models that uh, where where we just pay a monthly fee to access a service and we can ah, use that to the saas model beautiful yeah yeah i i, I would prefer that uh, and, and then obviously, uh, they, within that, that, there is some scalability, obviously, if you uh, uh, use a lot of computer power, you pay more. But, but this, this notion of just because uh, we sell an ad, someone should have a cut of the price. But why? Why is that so? Um, um, it, um, it may be easy, but, but, but why shouldn't it? Uh, why should it be like that? And there's no transparency in it. Um, and obviously, that's that's a big issue as well. Uh, and it's it seems to me like people are for beginning to forget about transparency. Um, advertisers may feel it's way too cumbersome to engage in actually getting the transparency, or they become tired of 
uh, slamming the agency saying we want uh, full transparency and obviously some agencies operate their own models and uh, then you have all the uh, yeah middleware that that uh, yeah neither we as publishers uh, nor no agencies can control and and you you, you don't get true transparency and um, if you don't have that then then it all becomes yeah it opaque about uh, fees and we don't get this um yeah kind of uh, we don't get rid of it um if, yeah if that makes sense yeah i mean i think that i think it's a it's a long march a little bit uh to getting getting the what publishers want but i think the cookie going away the id going away makes it a little bit more it, the power swings back to publishers i mean do you feel that I felt I just finished the, the webcast on this question. Do you feel that the transition away from, well, not the transition, but the, the deprecation of cookies and IDs is a good thing for publishers in the long run because it, it gives them the power to do more with their audiences, with their context. And it's interesting that, I, you know, seeing that the Washington Post launch uh, an, an ad network there recently around called Zeus, which was quite interesting, but it's mostly... Uh, around their first party data it's around their, their own ecosystem so does, does, does that money then start filtering back to the to the to the publisher in the sense that they have more power to do what they need to do yeah yeah i i do think so and and yeah uh yeah to answer your question it is definitely one of the best things that could ever happen to publishers is that the cookie goes you're probably, away. You're uh, probably the only person in the world that would say that right now thomas <laughs> Yeah, but I am the cookie fundamentalist. So you are, uh, yes, yes. Uh, but 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 it is because what we've seen throughout the years is um, our role in the value chain. When we did printed newspapers, while the, the Danish publishers they 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 owned forests in Finland, they owned shares in the paper mills, they owned the fucking ship that sailed the paper to Copenhagen. The printing plants they owned everything and now in the digital area uh, era uh, we are kind of reduced to paying reporters wages because distribution goes google and facebook ad sales through the big networks through buy side platforms uh sell side platforms all that tech there's really nothing left uh, data well agencies had it all they just collected it via the third party cookie now we actually have this moment in history um, where we can take back a small part of that value chain uh, and actually yeah we have control over our first party data and if we are smart we can leverage that to the market if we are smart we build a common contextual a publisher standard that every publisher will use so buyers actually know what kind of context they get and what classifier is behind uh, what method is behind uh, uh, the, the classification of articles then if if we do so if we actually start uh, trying to work with the market and influence it instead of just leaning back and saying hey some out there in the tech uh, sphere needs uh, to take care of all that for us. Then, then we will be prosperous. And all right. On that, on that positive note, we'll, we'll finish up there. And Thomas, thanks for bringing me through your thoughts on the Mad Tech Middleware because it's very important from a publisher perspective to, that will probably dictate what technology will work in the coming years. So, Thomas, thank you for your time today. Thank you for having me. That's great. And uh, thank you all for tuning in today. And that was the Mad Tech webcast. We'll see you next time, whenever that is. Thanks. <laughs>